I know we've had high power balls before and we've had lines and stuff, but this is, this is insanity. The Powerball Lotto stands at $200 million. In Indiana, that means long lines. If you win, that comes out to $8 million a year, $666,000 a month, $22,000 a day, and $900 an hour. This guy thinks he has the winning ticket. If I have, I'm a man on the loose uh, as a goose, and I intend to run like hell if I'm a winner. <laughs> and, and, and the only comment I'm going to have is no comment. A couple of miles down State Line Road in Illinois, a $74 million jackpot can't even draw a handful of people. But Illinois lottery officials say don't write off all that money. Don't waste your gas and go to Indiana. Buy a big game ticket. Winning $74 million will be the biggest thing that ever happens in their life. For some, that's a tough sell. Oh, forget Illinois, man. I'm looking at the big thing. $200 million has got to be it. The owner of this convenience store says that when the Indiana lotto is up, his business increases too. This guy is a good example. Oh, I've been down the road. I got that too. I had to get it. And you came here too? I came here too. Why? 78 million. <laughs> I'm trying to get my win home. <laughs> <laughs> The 800 students at Maria High School on the south side wanted to do something to remember the people who died one month ago today. So one by one, they did. They're thrilled to be able to show their patriotism. They have created a living flag. Each student dressed in the color they would represent in the flag, red, white, or blue. It makes me feel really proud that my school is actually doing something like this. People were so amazed that they stopped to see the flag take form. It makes it look that we're united still, even though the tragedies. Bonito? Bonito. And when it was done, well, just see for yourself. I want them to learn that as individuals, they may not have the power that they need, but at their age, in large groups, in cooperation, they can really achieve something. You think they learned something? I think so. I'm pretty darn sure. The stories from the people who were on the train are incredible. We had just passed, we were about to pass Walter Payne High School, and I, you know, I wish I had some eloquent to say, but the train just hit a brick wall, and uh, everybody went flying. Um, people hit their heads against the partitions and the posts. So uh, pretty much everybody who was standing ended up on the floor. Once firefighters were on the scene, they put a paramedic and a firefighter on each car to check for the people who were most badly injured. They brought in snorkel units to quickly remove the most seriously injured. Triage was set up on the ground. People were laid out in specific zones, red, green, or yellow, depending on their injuries. Then they were sent to the hospital. There was someone that was pregnant um, that fell. I don't. I think she was okay, but she was a little bit shaken up. There was um, a girl that apparently was standing by the glass right by the exit. She smashed her nose. It, it was all such a shock. I was reading a book and I had my glasses knocked and I rammed into the front of, uh, there was a, a pole. I was sitting, in, I happened to be lucky, I've been sitting in a seat. The people who were standing uh, were more, you know, everyone toppled on the ground. Firefighters and paramedics trained for this type of accident, but this time it was for real. It makes you feel like it made a difference for somebody that if, even if someone wasn't injured, I, I could calm them or help them or reassure them or just talk with them for the time that we were stuck up there. Um, definitely feels good to make a difference for somebody. That's the whole idea. That's why we do this. This is a very special day for Brianna, Stephanie, Joanna, Avery, Isaiah, Katie, and Jake. The Make-A-Wish Foundation in Chevy is giving them a day at Wrigley Field. 14-year-old Jake was pictured throughout the first ball. Today allows him to stop thinking about his illness, at least for this afternoon. Almost every day I try to not think about it, but it's really hard. But days like this, it's just, it's, happy. I feel glad that I'm still alive. Recently, Jake got news that he is getting better, but it's still a long road ahead. Phil has to be strong for his son. Very difficult. Because, <laughs> uh, it's tough. Today, the tears turn to smiles as Jake throws out the first ball. In the back of his mind, of course, he wants to meet Sammy. Please do not talk to Sammy. Just walk right by him. Come right back over here. 
Then the unthinkable happens. Hi, nice to meet you. Can I believe this day? No, I can't. <laughs> We wanted to test Amtrak security to see if I could just walk onto a train. Early on, I was stopped by Amtrak personnel. Sir! Oh! But that was the only time. We went to another gate and go right through the doors. No one stops us. And we didn't see any security personnel by the trains. We made our way down the tracks. I can even touch the trains. On another part of the train, there is an open door, and I'm able to actually get onto the train and walk around freely doing whatever I want with no one watching. There you go. We just got off an empty train where someone could have stashed anything. Nobody stopped us. As part of a security alert, Amtrak passengers now have to show ID before buying a ticket or checking their bags. Amtrak has its own police force and cameras, but our investigation does show some holes in the system. We're very concerned about what you found. Um, I want to say first of all that that was a train that was not in service, but given that um, it's still any unintended train should be locked, and secondly that train also would have been inspected by both police and mechanical before it went into service so there would have been a full security sweep. Clark Staten is a terrorism expert. He knows how terrorists operate. We showed him our video. No one should have been able to get that close to the equipment, um, period, end of issue. 